you know, as I begin to reflect upon the relational state of affairs of many of our marriages today, the fact of the matter is many of us as couples are thriving in our marriages. We have great relationships, but there is a growing population of couples that are experiencing extreme struggle. And so whether they've been married for one year, 10 years, or, or 40 years, in the realm of that relationship, they have gone from being soulmates to role mates to roommates. And that represents a marital decline. And, and oftentimes that, that occurs as a result of unresolved issues that has led to conflict. Now, conflict is nothing more than two opposing wills operating in the same place at the same time. And so the mentality is, well, you think your way and I'll think my way. Or, or we just have to agree to disagree. And if you continue to operate according to that methodology, then it's going to be difficult in finding resolution in your marriage. See, compatibility isn't being just like your partner. It's not thinking just like your partner or being wired just like your partner. For if you were just like your partner, then one of you has just become obsolete. No, compatibility is identifying the differences in figuring out how we can make that work in the relationship. And oftentimes we've allowed these differences to create problem areas. Now there are three in particular that I want to focus on, one of them being communication. You know, we have been so soaked and saturated and drenched in communication styles and behavioral patterns and emotional reactions that oftentimes it impedes our ability of having effective communication. Number two, we struggle in the area of personal finance. You know, coming from different family cultures and seeing money managed in a particular way, it has helped to shape our money personalities. So when we enter into adult marriage relationships, these money personalities clash. And now we enter into these tug of war power struggles with our partners. A third area that we really struggle with is in the area of physical intimacy. You know, sexuality is one of those things that many of us enjoy to do, but we hate to talk about. And oftentimes we have different expectations in the bedroom, different challenges or, or, or beliefs or things that we struggle with uh, that keep us from being on one accord. And so the question is, how do we truly resolve these conflicts in our marriage? Well, there's three key things that we have to do. Number one, we have to give up our need to be right. See, when you are so committed to being right, by default, it makes your partner always wrong. And whenever you have a right or wrong, black and white, this or that type of uh, dynamic in your relationship, it's always going to be problematic. So give up your need to be right. When you're willing to be wrong, it means that you're teachable. It means that you can learn something, right? Number two, you know, many people believe that you know, compromise is the key to a successful relationship. And though I understand that perspective, you know, I believe that compromise is a win-lose scenario. In a relationship, if I'm constantly compromising for my partner or accommodating, you know, their position on something, sacrificing, you know, how I feel about something, that may help to resolve an immediate situation, but over the course of time, <clears throat> it's going to really weigh heavy on the one who's always compromising, and it's going to create an, in, an imbalance in the relationship. And so it's going to get to, to the point where the person who's always compromising is going to want to go rogue because they just can't take it anymore. And so rather than compromising, you know, we believe in marital negotiation, which is a win-win scenario. That means that you're considering the positions and the perspectives of both partners and coming up with something that is mutually beneficial so that both of you win in the relationship. So it takes you from thinking about me, myself, and I to thinking in terms of we us our. It is no longer the team of me, it becomes the team of we. Number three, I think it's critically important that you always include a third partner or a third party in the relationship if you reach an impasse. The reality is when you're engaging in conflict with your partner, you are listening with emotional ears. And so you need to have someone who is emotionally detached from the situation that can look at it from a sound perspective and reasoning can come into the situation to bring about a resolution. Now that third party can come in the form of a counselor or a coach. It can even be a marriage mentor. 
another couple that you esteem and value, and you believe that they have a collective wisdom that you can glean from in your marriage. And so if you focus on these three key areas, I promise you that you'll be able to resolve any conflict, any challenge, any struggle that you're experiencing in your marriage.